So what a day is Thursday. What day is it? <laughs> August 13th, 2020. And this is the week in charts. Obviously, I want to thank all you guys and girls for being here. Appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. I know there's a lot of other things you could be doing now. And I appreciate that very much. So what are we talking about? Well, obviously, we'll talk about current market conditions. I may have a lot to say about that when we get to the live charts. Your questions on trading, if you don't mind, keep them to the slides. And then when we get to the live charts, we should have plenty of time. Feel free to ask about anything you want. A couple other things for you for your benefit. Your favorite stock picks, wait till we get the live charts for those and just punch them in the Q&A, uh, the questions board. And that way I'll see them when we get to the live charts and they won't get overlooked. And ask about one tick, one ticker at a time. So what are we talking about? Well. I woke up this morning thinking about that IPOs could be the next big thing. And then I also got to thinking that they, they're still the next thing. Now, with the market making new highs as it is, a lot of people are going to bring their company public. And there's a plethora of IPOs out there. Now, obviously, you can't trade them all. And I'm going to show you quite a few things tonight that's going to help you to trade them. And obviously, I have a course on IPOs. And we talk a lot about IPOs behind the firewall in the members area. But this should give you a good start and a good feel for how they work. And then in maybe next week or week after, we'll follow up on a few concepts that I want to drive home. And I'm, I think when we get to the live charts in a little while, when we look at the actual IPOs, a lot of this will make a lot more sense. Before we do all that, there's a disclaimer screen. As you know, you can lose money trading or as often summing up. All predictions are about the future and a lot of stuff can happen between now. And then I borrowed that from my buddy, Greg Morris. So lately, if you've been watching my stock chart show and the week of charts, you know that I've been spending a lot of time talking about the methodology in action. It's one thing for me to say, okay, I like pullbacks and here's how the money management works. And, and oh yeah, you need the psychology thing to follow your plan. But it's another thing to show you actual setups in action, actual setups and actual trades that were actually taken. And along those lines tonight, obviously we're talking about IPOs still being the next thing. And I'll show you some of my recent trades there. And most everything here tonight, I think was mentioned ahead of time in the Facebook group. I grabbed a couple of posts earlier today. We'll take a look at those in just one second. Now, before we get into some of the patterns I like to trade and talking about IPOs in general, when an IPO first comes out, let's say up until first 30 days or so, that's where most of your pioneer setups. Now, by pioneers, like the American pioneers, you're either going to get the gold or you're going to get arrows in your back. Pioneer setups are probably my favorite thing to do. I'm not a breakout player, but in IPOs, IPOs have a breakout characteristic to them. And that's one thing that I really, really like about them, and they tend to break out and follow through. And I went into a lot of details in all this, obviously, in the IPO course, but a lot of the reasons is that, one, you can't short them, at least not the layman, and then, two, everybody's happy when it's making new highs, three, they, they have a lot of pent-up news going for them. And when they finally are able to get past the quiet period and all, a lot of that news begins to come out. And guess what? That news is good. And it was good long before the IPO ever came out. They wrote those reports a long, long time ago. So there's a lot of other things that make the Pioneer type of setups work really well. And there's no set time frame, but for my Pioneer work and the first secondary patterns, I usually look at the last 90 days and that's what we're going to focus on tonight when we get to the la the live charts and we're going to look for live setups and we're going to take a look at some of these pioneer setups mostly and we'll see if there's any secondary setup now a secondary setup can be some specific ipo setup such as a first deep retracement and i'll show you one of those in a little while we actually have one in the core portfolio and they could also be things such as just a regular old trend knockout or something like that. If you look at this chart, you'll see right around that secondary setup, right around here, there was a big TKO. So core setups begin setting up 
in IPOs, such as the TKOs, pullbacks, trade pivot pullbacks, et cetera, early in the process, right after the Pioneer setups. Now, after a few months, the IPOs tend to behave, and we tend to trade them just more like the core methodology. For instance, in this OCFT, we played the pullback right here, and I'll show you that in just one second. Now, when IPOs are still relatively new, I call them toddlers, and a toddler could be up to a year or two old. I was calling out my IPO list a few days ago because I was getting way too many that have been there for too long, and I even I decided to leave a few, of, or quite a few of there, I should say, that have been in there for a couple of years. So even after a while, IPOs can still be viable, and some of these pioneer setups, now I wouldn't completely limit your pioneer setups just to way back here the first few days. Let's say if this IPO just kind of rallies up and then dies out for a while, you could still pay attention to the new closing high, the buy at B pattern, six months, eight months, or even a year or so down the road. But as a general statement, your pioneer setups within the first 30 days, and sometimes that's your best setups because that's where the most excitement is. Now, sometimes an IPO will come public at the wrong time, Let's say that this company here, OCFT, came public right around here, and you can see it just kind of died out. But sometimes they die out, they get their act together, and then they begin to take off again. And maybe something like a bow tie or something could be a really good pattern there. I call that a phoenix type of pattern because they begin to rise from the ashes. Now, I remember when I was looking at this chart thinking, I should have traded this stock back here. And when I checked my records, I did, fortunately. But this was... A pioneer setup back here it took off and i remember getting stopped out now i'm not sure why i didn't take this setup now right before we went live i checked an account it wasn't there but it might i may have taken it in another account but it does look like it would have failed miserably okay so i'm not sure whether i missed that trade or not completely but the, the my most active account did not have it for some reason now we did play this in the service recently we got it in here Within about a week or so, we took partial profits here, and then we got stopped out, unfortunately. And you should never use the word hope, but I was hoping that we'd be with this stock for a long, long time. But at least we got something out of it. So long, and thanks for all the fish. Now, let's talk about some pioneer setups. Now, here's, I just reached, I went into the Facebook group because I had traded this MEG, and I know that either I mentioned it or someone else mentioned it, and I did a search, and I noticed that quite a few of you guys were talking about these IPOs in here. Also, we're going to use ANNX as one of the examples, and I traded that one too. Both of those worked, although Meg hasn't set the world on fire just yet. And I'm going to show you something that a guru has never shown you, and we'll get to that in just one second. So this is the FSKR. Now, with the Pioneer setups, the Buy at B or the Buy at B with the, with the five-day SMA, which I'll show you in the live charts, we're not going to trade the IPO until at least the close of day five. So IPO comes public on Monday. We're not going to buy that IPO until the close of day five at the least, okay? So that's day two, this is day three, this is day four, and this is day five, okay. So now we've got one week of trading with this IPO. Now we can start looking for a place to get in. Well, in this particular case, the high was set on day one. Now the buy at B, we're just buying at a new closing high, but that closing high also has to be above the high of day one if day one sets the high for the week. In this particular case, it did, and that was also the highest close of the week. So we have to close above both of those, both the closing high and the high of day one in this particular case, because the high was set on day one. Now, let's say this day two here, high was up here, then we don't have to close above the high of day one, okay? And you can see it meandered a while and not a whole lot happened, but then all of a sudden it began to break out, closing above the high of day one and at a new closing high. And that's the actual trade. And we have not taken partial profits on that, not or I have not taken partial profits 
just yet on this particular one. And you can see this is what happened with this is what has happened so far with this one. So I'm showing you one that's live, yeah, kind of mediocre so far. But let's just see how this one shakes out. Now here's one we were talking about in the Facebook group. And I as I said, I've been so busy lately, I feel like I could have easily missed it. And so I was thanking you guys for this one. Day one, day two, day three, day four. So what happened on day four? Well, day four. The it made a new closing high. That's the highest close for the first week. And that closing high can be set on day five. When I initially did the IPO course, I didn't make that perfectly clear. And some of the follow-up sessions we did, the if that was day five and it was a new closing high, that would be a buy because the high was set on day four, as you can see right here. So this high is greater than the day one high, so we no longer have to worry about the day one high, okay? So all we need is a close above this high, and that's gonna give us a buy, and that was on that day there, August 3rd, and you buy market on close. Now, I was talking about this earlier in, I think it was in the pitch, which should be live in about an hour or so on Stock Charts TV channel. And this pattern does require a leap of faith. I took one a little while ago. I was rushed for time and I wasn't really paying attention. And within the last five minutes, I found one and I took it. And I haven't done <laughs> the amount of analysis that I should have on it. In fact, I'll do those do that analysis live, maybe after the fact a little bit, to see whether or not I should have taken the trade. And if you guys want to chime in on whether I should have taken it, let me know, but we'll take a look at that one in just one second. But it requires a leap of faith because it's kind of scary. You go in like, okay, I'm gonna buy it. I hope it did the right thing. And it's like, you have to wait to find out. Usually if you buy a stock in the middle of the day, you have a pretty good idea of whether you're getting a head start on a good trade or not. So there's the actual buy. This is what I call my model account. I try to keep it right around the same amount as the hypothetical 100K portfolio. And on these buy it, beat trades, by the way, you don't have to go in at a full 2%. You can go in a little bit smaller because there are obviously risky trades. So first day, second day starts to move. First day, not much. Second day starts to move. And then a few days ago, we had a really, really good rally, but it didn't came back in by the end of the day. So that was a bit of a bummer, but it didn't stop out. So there was no reason to exit the trade. Took off yesterday and today it came back in a little bit. Good questions coming in. Thank you. We'll get to that. Now, here's Meg. And this is another one we were talking about in the Facebook group. Day one, day two. Now, what happened on day two? It took out the day one high. All right. So we're no longer worried about the day one high anymore. Day three, day four, day five. Where's our highest close for the week? It was not on day five, so we wouldn't buy on day five. It was on day two. So you can see it broke out above that closing high and it also closed at a new closing high and that's crucial. And this is another one really hadn't set the world on fire just yet, but I saw it go into the black earlier today. So I feel pretty good about that. I feel pretty good about anything that's making money. Now let's talk a little bit about secondary setup. So this is one, this is where I'm gonna show you something that a guru has never shown you. So sit back, relax, and watch. Nice thrust higher, begins to pull back. This is a first deep retracement or first pullback. A little bit of both of those patterns. And this was the buy recommendation. Buy at 50, stop at 40, initial profit target at 60 for a risk of 10 points. And I called it IPO FDR, first deep retracement. It's also a pullback, first pullback IPO, whatever you want to call it. And that was the parameters that I put out in the trading service for June 15th. So let's take a look at what happened. Buys here, stops here, and the initial profit target is up here. So it starts to take off. We're feeling pretty good. And then it begins to implode and we get stopped out. And I know for a fact that I did drop an F-bomb, or I should say it's safe to say that I did. 
Now, before we get into a secondary setup on APG, which was in the service, I want to show you the original Pioneer area, so to speak, the first couple of weeks of trading. And this is why I didn't take the Pioneer setup. So it had a high of about 10.30 or 10 and change in here. And then it had a low of like eh, almost nine. So that's a that's a one point range in a ten dollar stock. That's like a ten percent range. I see some questions on range coming up in here. Good, keep them coming. And when we get to the live charts, I'll talk more and more about that. But in a case like this, it just didn't seem like enough range to me. So I decided to wait for a secondary setup. So this is what happened with the stock. You can see it did make a nice rally from lows, and then in perfect hindsight, of course, that buy at B type of pattern would have worked. You can take them when there's less range, but I think there's less excitement going into it. And I would just much rather trade an IPO with a bigger range and a lot more excitement. And you can see it made a first deep retracement. And if you look at the service on this day, this were this was our buys. And by the way, you can go in and look at these if you go to DaveLander.com slash archives. And I'll put a link in here somewhere. You could actually see all these recommended trades, warts and all. Uh, some of these didn't work. Now, this would DRD, I think, came really close to the profit target came back in. I did take partial profits on that one, not to rub salt in anyone's wounds. But when it was getting close, I warned everybody, look, it's getting kind of close. Think about taking profits, even if it doesn't quite get there. But anyway, so those are the three trades on that particular day. Getting back to APG, you can see you got a really deep retracement here. Entry there, stop there, and initial profit target above the market, obviously. And this is what happened. It triggered and kind of meandered around a little bit. And so far, so good. It's hit that initial profit target. And it's just off all-time highs. So, so far, so good. Well, we have Australia checking in. What time is it over there? You look very professional. Thank you. I had to get dressed up earlier, so I figured I'd uh <laughs> and older too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting older by the day. I think we all are, huh? <laughs> I appreciate this for our friends down under, but I'm already in the bourbon at seven. All right, Chris. Well, we should get some interesting comments from you tonight. So Chris was asking, how do you determine the IPT range on these? Well, when you're it depends on the setup. In some cases, with the buy at B, you could go almost to the to the low or someplace where it would be a complete failure. So let's just assume this range was a little bit bigger and we decided, okay, we got to buy at B on this particular day here. So we're going to buy this stock. And then if this stock comes all the way back into, say, like right here, you know that it's likely to have failed. Now, I know some people, They'll take these setups if the range isn't too big, right? And they'll put a stop way down here because right there, you know that you have completely, the setup has completely failed, okay? All right, so this is a stock that I talked about in the stock chart show the pitch. They asked me for five stocks and most of the stocks that I gave them were IPOs. So, so far, this stock has gone down. Well, we don't buy until day five at the least, okay? So, this right here would be the buy right in this area here. And obviously, we're ha we have it closed above that. Now, I included the five-day SMA, and this will make more sense when we get to the live charts. The buy at B pattern is for stocks that are below $20 a share. That was my rule that I came out with in 2014, I think, or 2011, I forget when I did the IPO course originally. And I said, you know, this is subject to change with market conditions, and maybe now we could use a little bit higher entries on that, or a little bit higher price stocks with the buy at B. So I'm a little lenient with a 20, 20 something dollar stock, and but if it's a higher price stock, one thing I noticed was I was missing some really good momentum stocks. So I added a momentum filter to where the low had to be greater 
than the moving average. Okay, in other words, you had Landry light and the moving average, just a five day moving average. Originally, I put, I kind of backed into that because what I originally did was I wanted to come up with some sort of not quantified, but qualified way of showing people that, okay, you can't trade an IPO until the lows above the five day moving average. Well, you won't have a five day moving average until at least five days. In Telechart, I think it's actually six. So let's take a look at another one. So this is PSTX day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, okay? Now, what happened on day one? Well, day one made the highest high for the week, okay? Now, if this day here was, let's say, day four, then this would be the highest high for the week. But the first week of trading, if the high is set on day one, you have to be above that high. Now, the question is, what's buy at B? If a market is going to go from A to C and B is somewhere in between, well, it's going to have to pass through B on its way to C, okay? Now, in a regular stock, an established stock, there's a lot going on. There could be overhead supply. There could be a lot of trading. You could have breakout traders ready to pounce, and then you could have reversion to mean traders ready to jump on top of them and short them. There's a whole lot going on. So you can't just buy at B, although I think you would probably do better than, of course, trying to bottom fish or something. So that's where the name buy at B came from. And we don't have a good name for the pattern with the with the moving average. And since everybody's not completely familiar with buy at B and these things, I will flesh them out a little bit more next time we do a presentation on IPOs, which could likely be next week. So let me just finish these things up. Once you get to the, once we get to the live charts, a lot of this is going to make a lot more sense. So this stock would have to close above the high of the first day of trading, again, because that's when the high was set. And I usually give it a little bit of wiggle room. And that's just to avoid being triggered in on a close. It just kind of barely makes it there. I like it to be really solid and plus you don't know if it's going to close at a new high to the close anyway so you would buy market at close on this one around 1750. now so far this stock has failed miserably so what okay this is why we don't buy the first week so if you'd have bought at any time during the first week you would be a hurting pop maybe right here you might have a little bit of profit now but not much okay a lot of times I've identified half a dozen common patterns and another half a dozen less common patterns in IPOs. And one of the most common patterns is die and die. They just come public and they die out after the first few days of trading, sometimes on day one. And I was doing a presentation a while back where I showed example after example after example to drive my point home like, don't go in and buy the first day. Don't go in and buy the first week unless it's making a new closing high and then somebody raised their hand and they're like should we short them because they sure look like you could short them and i would say no number one you probably can't in most cases you can't only uh, the market makers i think can short these stocks the public cannot initially at least and even if you could there's a little bit of a danger in the ipos obviously because they could skyrocket higher so very, it'd be a very dangerous market to short, even if you could. So let's take a look at some live charts. Before we do, a couple of things I want to look for and flesh out. Volume is tricky, 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 especially in a pioneer pattern, because you only have like five days worth of trading. So you have to look at each day and then figure that out. And sometimes, you don't get enough volume until day five. Now, somebody in the group pointed out you could end up with a Hotel California situation, and that is when you get in the chart, but it's really hard to get out because the volume just isn't there. So it can be a little tricky. Now, money management is key. I was looking at some of my recent trades, Oric and FBAC. They did incredible early on, but then they eventually failed and failed miserably but I was able to use a little money management, make a little money and scream next and go on and find something else. 
Now, I get a, I got a question about range earlier. One of the tricky things with range, and I'll show you one I got into today, which I think had a little bit of that characteristic. I, I just it showed up so fast, showed it, bought up. You know, I might have jumped the gun a little bit. We'll find out once we get to the live chart. But sometimes you have a narrow range, narrow range, narrow range, or fairly narrow range for the first week of trading, and then all of a sudden you got the one huge day on your buy day. So it's a little tricky on whether or not you should go after those. Now, sometimes with the Pioneer setup, there's not enough time to get into a lot of details because believe me, there's a lot of details on when you want to take a Pioneer versus a secondary setup. But a lot of times with these Pioneer setups, you want to not use fundamentals, don't get me wrong, but you want to make sure there's some sort of excitement as I said in the IPO course, what's the story, fad or glory, okay? doesn't They don't have to be splitting the, the atom. It could be a burrito maker or something like that or a yoga clothing maker as a joke. <laughs> a clothing maker for guys who eat too many burritos. But as a general statement, you want some sort of excitement about the stock unless there's a really nice range. Now, I did miss carrier corp and we'll have to look at that one maybe if we have time and i think it's like hey they make acs i just couldn't get excited about the company but in hindsight it probably would have been a pretty darn good trade now as i said earlier there's six common patterns or so one of the most common is the die and die it comes public and then it just dies out and sometimes you get what I call the fly and die. It means that it takes off and then it comes all the way back in. That's okay. You can trade that big rally there. I know some people, and I don't want to call anybody out, but it's like we had a really big IPO a while back, and it shot straight up, and we made a lot of money on it. But I know some people held on to it and made a complete round trip. Please don't do that. That's one way to put yourself into a serious state of regret. All right, so let's find the next big winners and take a look at your questions too. Now, before we do that, one thing I've discovered over the years as somebody running a small office here is that trading could be a very lonely sport. <laughs> kind of hard to go tell the wife, oh, we had a pretty bad day, babe. <laughs> I've made that mistake a few times. But the great thing with the Facebook group, which is part of Dave Landry's gold membership, you can interact with other traders, ask for help. See the signs and signals. And you know what? I get a lot of great stocks from you guys. So I appreciate that. And then follow along with trades like opening gap reversals. By the way, is it just me or have the opening gap reversals not been working? You hate ogres? Yeah, opening gap reversals are tricky. And I think what I need to do with, with the opening gap reversals is just back it up to, to you know, it's kind of like dance with the one that brung you. Go back to the go back to the original ogres that paid off and not these less volatile stocks where the stock is actually set up. So let me get the charts share and let's take a look at some IPOs. Let me make sure we're seeing the, um, Chris says he needs bourbon. <laughs> Not a whiskey drinker. I'm more of a beer kind of guy. By the way, what I've discovered by accident with telechart and uh, I do have a way to do it with stock charts and I don't have it in front of me now, but in next week's show, I'll, I'll give you the link. There's a way to trick, if you have a stock charts account, there's a way to trick stock charts. It's kind of similar to the way I trick Telechart into giving you the latest new issues. In FinViz, obviously, you can just go in and say IPO date last 30 days. And I use that too. I do use a variety of things to find the IPOs to create my IPO database. And I do that because for some reason, I guess nobody's perfect, but it seems like one company might pick up a stock before another for whatever reasons, or might not pick it up on the day one. But if you just show you real quick, if you go to all stocks in the system, and if you sort it by something like a, a 200 day moving average, a distance away from it, or a close minus whatever, you can get the rejects. For instance, like if I sort them by 50 day HV, it's just do like close by minus 20. And you come down to the bottom of this list. These are all the stocks down here that have come public over the last 20 days. It's amazing. Everybody and brother is coming public, okay? So 
now might be a good time to go after IPOs. They're flooding the market, which could be a bad sign. I realize that. But right now, it could be a good time. And the, the great thing about IPOs is, let's say we end up in a bear market, God forbid, okay? Well, nobody's going to bring their company public if the market is headed straight down. You really couldn't find a whole lot of IPOs once this market began to tank back in March, okay, and late February. So anyway, the rejects for whatever your scans are are going to be the IPOs. That's a neat little trick I found by accident. So if we go into my IPO list and we scroll down to the bottom, this is where let's do the last 90 days. Okay, so I'm going to use the same trick within my watch list. Okay, Stuart has the link. I wonder if I can share that with everyone. I don't know if I could share that. See, it's going to be a big long link. Yeah, we don't, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how we can do that on the fly. But thank you for sharing that, Stuart. You might want to, um, could you email me that if you don't mind? So if we come into IPOs, we sort them by 90 days, 90 days, whatever the, the thing is, 90 day volume. Okay. This is the one I use right here. Now, we don't care what the volume is. All we're doing is we're getting rid of anything that's been around for more than 90 days. And this is the first IPO that comes up. So here you can see the thing with this one is, so the volume was okay, and then it really, really, really died out. So this would have been a really tough one to trade given the volume. The other thing you have to do, which I didn't mention earlier, was when you get to actual trading, you have to check the spread on these. So if they've got a two or three point spread, then unfortunately, you're not gonna be able to trade it. The a and X had a really good spread, and every now and then, now it gets kind of crazy. So you got to use limit orders to get out. But do check that spread before going in. So this stock is trending nicely. I have it in my watch list. Let's just find something brand new. Okay, here's one right here. It's above $20 a share, obviously. So what I would do in a case like this is I would add in the five-day moving average, okay? And the low has to be greater than the moving average. And in this particular case, because the high was set on day one, it would also have to be above that high. So you've got, let's see, you've got okay volume in here. This one's just really not jumping out at me just yet. Here's the other thing too, I was asked about range. The range is okay on this one, but I think that you could go after something with a little bit better range, okay? So this one imploded a little bit today. Let's just see if we could find something that is more of a setup. Now, as we go through these, I'm gonna point out a few things that are, are happening and we'll find some buy it. Uh, we'll find some dies, okay? Here's a good example of a die, die and die, okay? So day one, day two, day three, and then the stock has died out since, okay? So leave it alone unless it does what? It makes a new closing high. Well, day one was not the high for the week, okay? So this stock would be a buy at a new closing high and the low above the five-day SMA. Let's see what else we can. Let's try to find a good one going in tomorrow. So this one, I could tell right away, it looks kind of on the thin side. So we take a look at the volume. And obviously, we're not going to have enough time to, to go through all of them. But this one might, this one could work, okay? Range is a little small. The high was set on day one, so it'd have to close above the day one high. Now, you'll have to go in and do a little due diligence on these to make sure they're tradable. This stock right here, unfortunately, just not enough volume. You can see an average volume. We have an average now of 60,000, if that much. So, unfortunately, that one's too thin. Now, here's a die set up, die and die, okay? This is why we don't buy on the first day of trading, okay? Look at what happened. It set the high on day one, and we haven't seen that high since, okay? This is the FSKR. The range wasn't fantastic on this one, but the shell companies or the rage, and this is why I bought this particular stock, and the closing high, this high was above the day one high, so we're no longer worried about that. So the buy, as we've talked about earlier, was on this particular day here and that one. And so far, so good.
Now here's one, forget about this trading back here. We talked about this one in last week's, the week of charts. So day one, day two, day three, day four, this new closing high. I bought this one on this close. I exited some of it in after hours, some of it the next day, and then it imploded. I don't think I exited the next day. Let me scratch that. But I exited, I did exit in after hours, and then it imploded and stopped me out on a remainder. That is the fly and the die. That is why you have to use money management. Here's that APG we talked about earlier, that first deep retracement. Just some crap. Another die and die. So let's see if we could find something that kind of jumps out at me a little bit that's pretty much ready to go. And so far, not too much. Now this is one that I missed and it probably would have been a secondary setup for me. The range wasn't that great, open lending, eh, can't get too excited about a lender, but it did pull back and make a nice little pullback after a breakout. And I did miss this trade in here. I had it in my notes, I don't know why I missed it, but shame on me for that. So let's just go through these. And a lot of these you can see are just garbage. And like this one here, it trades 2,000 shares a day. By the way, that was an ac acquisition company back in the day when I first did the IPO presentation. I just said toss out all those acquisition companies. But now these SPOCs, spe special purpose acquisition companies, are pretty cool things. So here's the thing. If you don't walk away with anything tonight, but this one thing, okay, you're not going to make any money, but I'm going to keep you out of a lot of trouble, okay? One, two, three, four, five, and the stock implodes. Leave it alone. If they don't go up, don't buy them. Like, for instance, this is Dun & Bradstreet. Eh, I can't get too excited about Dun & Bradstreet. You know, what? what's the excitement there? But if it goes up and makes a secondary setup like the APG did, then maybe I'll take a secondary setup there. Another die out. See if we could find something going in tomorrow. As you can see, plenty, plenty of stocks just dying out, okay? Dying out. Dying out. Dave, I thought you said there's a bull market in IPOs. Well, there is, but just not in the ones that are going straight down. Now, this is Agora. Is that the financial company, financial marketing company or whatever? So let's see, one, two, three, four, five. I just couldn't get excited about this company, even though the range, well, the range was kind of small on this. And in these higher price stocks, I'm a little bit more selective, okay? Because it's like all the excitement right out the gate, this thing gaps higher from the offer price. I doubt seriously that they brought it public this high. And then it came back in. Now you can say, well, Dave, you did have that SMA buy pattern here. But it shot up and came all the way back here, so I wouldn't take a stock that's failing that quick. So that's why I didn't take that one. What do we have here? A stock that came public, okay? Just a turd, right? <laughs> came public and imploded. Okay, lemonade, that cool, refreshing drink. So what do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, okay? Eh, it's a high, high price stock, so I'm gonna say, let's make sure it's above the moving average and closing at a new high, and it didn't do both of those things. So I avoided it, and so far it's imploded, okay? Now this looks pretty interesting. I think this is one that I am long. Yes, it is, ANNX, okay? So if we back it out a few days, I don't think we can. But this is the one we looked at earlier, okay? One, two, three, four, five. The range was okay. Had plenty, plenty of volume at the time at least, and now it's a little bit on the thin side, but that's okay. This one's already taken off. Now, here's the one I got into today, and we'll see if I live to regret it, okay? I saw this five minutes before the close. I'm doing an IPO webinar tonight. Wouldn't it be cool to get in an IPO the night I did the webinar, right? So day one, day two, and now it's above 25, above $20 a share. But as I said earlier, I'm a little bit more lenient with that right now, given the nature of the market, okay? 
and it closed at an all-time high. So I bought this stock on the close. I did not bet the form, okay? Because this was a pretty scary trade to make, I have to admit. As crazy as some of the big Dave trades are, this one was really crazy. And I was on the cusp of not jumping in. But shame on me. I was so busy working on this and other presentations and everything else that I didn't take the proper time to do my analysis. But this is one new closing high. Figured I'd give it a shot. I wasn't going to bet the form, but I wanted at least enough on to say that I took the trade and so I could show you the trade. Now, this one might set up on a pullback. We'll have to let it pull back a little bit, maybe a first deep retracement. By the way, ETFs, take those out because we're not trading ETFs. We're looking for some excitement, not some kind of group of stocks. Okay, so anything ETF or no buy, we just kind of go through these quickly. Now, let's see if we can find you something else. Okay, here's the MEG. Okay, now this is one that I'm long with a buy at B pattern. We just talked about this one earlier. Beginning to wake up a little bit today. It still looks pretty good. I, I know I'm talking my position. <laughs> Market your house. <laughs> I'm half kidding. No, 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 don't do that. But it still looks pretty good. And I think this thing makes new highs. It could continue higher. So I like this one. I still like that one, obviously. And again, am I talking my position? I don't know. Couple of. ETF. This thing is thin. What happened day one? It absolutely imploded. Stay away from that. Okay. Now, this one's not jumping out at me right away, but if you will check the volume and see, but this might be viable as a setup. Let's just see what the what the volume is. Okay, the volume is okay. So we'll have to check the spread. The the range could be a little bit better. Okay. So in a case like this, I might let this stock see if it can rally and then look to play the first pullback. But let's say the range is pretty big, like that NIRX, so whatever that stock was we just looked at a minute ago, then I might take it on the close, okay? So put this one on your radar. What happened on day one though, okay? The high was set on day one, so you have to go in above that high on a closing basis. And ideally, in that particular case, because the range wasn't fantastic, I'd like to see an expansion of range on that one okay all right what do we have here another turd what did it do it came public it went down okay this is why we don't buy on the first day of trading where's my stop on the nurks uh back in the range way back in the range in our ix let's see if i could jump to it and come back in our ix yeah, I figured that, and this is why I didn't put a whole lot of shares on. I mean, this thing's at an, at least four or five points. So I bought up here about 25. If it comes back down to 20, then I have failed, okay? But it could easily come in three or four points and then take off, okay? Which I'm going to have to stomach through, and I'm not going to be happy about, it, okay? So this one doesn't have enough volume to trade anyway. It doesn't have tremendous amount of range. But let's just count them off, like one, two, three, four, five. Technically, it did close at a new closing high. And then let's put in a moving average and see. So, well, in Telechart, we don't have a moving average that early. So I decided to pass on this one. And what you could do is you could wait and see if it goes on to make new highs and then play the first deep retracement. What happened here? Well, big big hoorah on the first day and then it imploded. No need to put capital into harm's way, okay? Now, here's one that has been catching my eye, okay? But the volume can get a little squirrely in here. And here's the tricky part. I don't know if you can read it on your screen, but this thing every now and then has a little tiny volume day, okay? Like less than 100,000 shares. And it also did not close above this high. But I would suggest you put this on your radar for tomorrow. Let's check the spread. This is FTHM, okay? Don't be a hero, don't get in early. Let's wait till tomorrow's close and see if we can close above this high. Let's check the spread. Let's make sure that it is gonna close above this high. And then this one might be worthwhile. So that's FTHM, whatever the one was in the slide, PSTX, I think. So that's at least two. 
rack space I talked about in the meeting today. It doesn't have a tremendous amount of range just yet, but it does have a little excitement. It's cloud. I'm, I hope my uh, website is hosted with Rackspace. It used to be a lot more reasonable, but it's expensive. I want to make the giraffe joke, but I better not. But this might be worth at least putting on your radar for any close above this closing high especially if it increases the range a little bit from the range that we've had so far. So, so far, not a whole lot of excitement about that stock. This one is kind of interesting, so we'll have to do a little bit more research. One, two, three, four, five. It also has to be above the five-day moving average, so we'll come back to this one, but I think the volume's a little thin on that. This is another one that I put on my list today for the panel that I was on. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. So now this stock can be traded because it's been trading for a, what, a whole week? Where would the buy be? Well, the close, the highest close is 25. We've got okay range in here. So any close above 25 would be a buy on RKT. Somebody write these down and then next week, let's take a look at them. Let's see what happens, okay? This one looks like it's too thin. But notice it did die out after day one. This one looks like it's kind of thin too. Now these, now go back to something like this and keep an eye on, on it over the next week or so. Maybe the volume will increase. Maybe it'll be worth trading. But for now, I'm not seeing any reason to go after it. Okay, so that's the newest IPOs out there. The last 90 days, I kind of ran through them pretty quick. Take your time, go through them, do a little research, weed out all those ETFs, and then see if there's anything worthwhile. Okay, Chris, you were asking about my stop. Was that on that NERCS trade or whatever that stock is? CMPI for tomorrow. Um, yeah, so this is probably uh, bad trading in here. Okay, but look at your, look at your, I saw this one earlier. Look at the volume on this thing. The volume is, is virtually non-existent. And it looks like the range is not existed either. So yeah, maybe do some more analysis on that. Maybe pull it up in a secondary charting package. But I don't know about that one for now. I'd be really careful on that one, okay? Okay, let's take a look at the overall market. And we'll finish, we'll get, come back to these questions. Enjoy my Moscata IPO. IPA. Oh, but Scott, the IPA. Well, where are you, Stuart? How come you don't offer me a beer? <laughs> I am um, enjoying your banter nonetheless. Yeah, I feel like I need a beer after tonight, but I'm going to try to hold off to tomorrow night. No guarantees there. All right, let's take a look at the overall market. And it's going to be impossible for me not to do Tiny Elvis tonight. I mean, look at this uptrend. It's huge. But let's take a look at the high of the market. Now, we were a quarter percent away yesterday, and now the eh, market was a little soft today. Well, now we're a little further away. But, you know, we're pretty darn close. Now, here's what I'm thinking. And I kind of look at the man in the street as a microcosm. And nobody has a plan in place. The average man on the street doesn't have a plan, okay? It's like, okay, they wait until the market's down 30% and ask me what to do. And the big blue arrow is pointing straight down. I'm like, dude, why don't you watch the, the market in a minute at least? Or, you know, you're my good friend here. I'm sure we could work something out where I can maybe let you take a peek at the trading service to see what I'm talking about with the overall market. Or you can come to the weekend chart. Charts. If only if you had a friend that was obsessed with the markets, that spends 12 hours a day in front of his screens, ruining his eyes, ruining his hands, <laughs> and everything else, right? Getting fatter by the minute. Anyway, I digress. But most people call me here, and I'm like, well, dude, it's headed lower, and so they pay, they bail out, and then you know it goes all the way back to brand new highs, and then that FOMO begins to kick in somewhere around here. Now, will the FOMO be enough to accelerate us higher? I don't know, but I think the market is a good predictor of things, and I felt it in my bones. I never felt it, something like this more in my life. When we cracked back in February, 
you can ask anyone who knows me, and I'm a bit of a germaphobe, don't get me wrong, but I felt it in my bones like this was going to be the real deal. The market just looked ugly. Not so much the real deal in the market, because I already I was convinced of that, but it was more so this corona thing was going to be the real deal. And it turned out to be the real deal. But now, eh, people don't seem to care about it as much as they did. And people are still dying, and that's the thing, but you can't confuse the issue with facts. I recently met someone about a week before he contracted it. And he was a spry younger man that did uh, paddle boarding and all kinds of stuff, fit, works out, and it nearly took him down. He was in the hospital for 10 days. So it's still a real deal, but I think the market is climbing the wall of worry and the market seems to be over it, at least for now. Doesn't mean we won't have some serious corrections along the way. Doesn't mean that it won't scare the hell out of us here and there, but for the most part, the big blue arrow continues to point out. NASDAQ looking pretty good, just off of all-time highs. I mean, that's been really impressive. The market has shrugged off all of this mess, right? Russell 2000 has broken out of its range, still has a little overhead supply to get through, but so far, so good for the rusty. Gold, the commodity, had that big break a few days ago. And somebody asked me today as a trend follower, actually it was David Keller. It's like, hey, as a trend follower, you know, what happens when you get when that you get a big gap against you like that? It's like, well, you, it sucks. <laughs> it sucks real bad. You get knocked out of your positions. I got knocked out of, I think, two out of three of my gold stocks a couple days ago. Okay. And now they're bouncing back. Of course, two out of three of them I no longer have as they're bouncing back nicely. Speaking of gold stocks. Here's the gold stocks. I still think the golds, I'm still bullish on the golds. I don't like gaps in a chart, but with a commodity related stock, I'm okay with a gap. But I'm still, I still consider, I'm still having a hard time going after particular gold stocks that have huge gaps in them. Silver, same thing you can see, but silver's trying to close that gap so far. In fact, I'm actually bullish on SLV, which took out this TKO high. And I'd like I'd like to see some more follow through here, but so far so good on silver. Semiconductors looking pretty good off a little bit today. Nice upturn remains intact there. Now let's take a look at biotech, and there is a lot of concern about biotech, a lot of fear mongering going on. But here's the good deal: the more people begin fighting trends, or the more people fight trends, the better the trends will be if people rush out and start shorting biotech and then biotech goes up they're going to have to be they're going to be forced to cover now don't throw caution to the wind if we get a bow tie which we could really soon in here okay unless we get above 28,000 really soon on the media general was media general now media general is bought out by somebody else it's but it was like it's weird it's like they're still called uh mg now they're called morningstar industry groups and they were Media, uh, was it Media General Industry Group? So, whatever they are in TC, these are the ones that I use just because they're real convenient. But yeah, biotech is looking questionable. The, the great thing, though, is on an individual issue basis, there's still a lot of good looking stocks, okay, in biotech. So, let's just wrap this up real quick and then we'll get to your individual stock questions. Health Service is looking pretty darn good in here, right at brand new highs. So, that just looks like a consolidation to me. I, I would expect this to uh, not expect don't expect anything in the markets but so far so good and drugs don't look quite as bad as biotech they look more like a consolidation in here kind of digesting the gains ready to take off again okay let's open it up for individual stock questions <laughs> tell me we're getting older <laughs> Laurent. Okay, stop location on these IPOs, especially if you're buying on the day five. It, it's going to have to be on a case by case basis. If it pulls all the way back in to where it took off, okay, on that breakout bar, like on that, was it NIRX? I don't, I haven't remember. My daughter, when she was little, she used to say to memorize. And sometimes I joke with my wife, we'd say that N NRIX. So as we said earlier, NRIX would take a really wide stop, okay? So if you're buying here, if it comes back to here, it probably has failed. So four points or so on that. Now, good question on the APG. He says, Lawrence says, too many days of the pullback. Well, yeah, if you're trading a 
regular stock setup. Now I will tell you this, in more recent times I've bent or bended, what's the correct terminology there? I've bent the methodology a little bit. I've been talking for 12 hours today, so sorry. But what I've done is I've become a little bit more lenient because the, the volatility has been so crazy as of late. With an IPO, I'm even more lenient with something like the first deep retracement. And Lauren, I think you have the the IPO course. And let me know if if I wasn't lenient on those pullbacks in there. But when these things pull back and have these deep retracements, and I hate to say it, I hate to use the word Fibonacci, but they do kind of take on a Fibonacci look to them. And the great thing is you got the low, you got the high, and you got the little pullback. And in my first book, I actually had a Fibonacci pullback, and please don't tell anybody that. But here's the thing. Fibonacci is sort of an interesting thing. It's something like an IPO for like a first deep retracement. Is But I just like to eyeball a Fibonacci type of pattern. I don't actually trade off a of Fibonacci. My problem with the FIB people, as I have said ad nauseum, is they draw a thousand lines on the chart, and sooner or later the market hits one and goes to the other, and then they point out how great their thousand lines on the chart are, okay? Oh, 9 a.m., that's not too bad, SPC. Um, I don't see any reason to get too excited about this stock. It's kind of bottomed out in here. It's a REIT. Of course, it's got a, look at that, it's got an HV of 117 for a REIT. Anybody remember a REIT at 117? <laughs> Never. No, it's it's it doesn't. I can't get that excited about it. I mean, I hear you. It's kind of cup and handily, saucer and handily. You know, if it was down here at all time lows, maybe. Okay. W T R H. Yeah, this looks kind of interesting. Now, it kind of was all over the place back here, but it did accelerate higher and did pull back. So yeah, I give you. I'll allow it. That looks pretty interesting. Uh, you know, I don't like all this wideness trading back here, but if we zoom in a little bit, that still looks pretty good. You've had a pretty good run in here, a fairly persistent run and a pullback. So yeah, Chris, good job on that one. A T R O. A T R O. No, that looks like the other one. It's kind of cup and handle looking. Uh now. In some cases, I have been noticing, and I think it was John Ross in the Facebook group pointed out that you have these return to paradise, stock takes off, goes down, bases, and then does this again. And I think Dick Fruth called that tombstone. And then I've been reading a lot. I've always I always read these old, old books on technical analysis and on it. And I know somewhere in those books, they talk a little bit about that pattern. This is not a great example of that. But lately, I've been noticing the characteristic quite a bit. This is my the one I always joke about. They make unmanned aerial drones. But notice that it took off, came in, and then took off again. So I haven't officially started trading these, okay? I haven't completely wrapped my head around it, but that's one thing that's been showing up as of late. So that pattern, that stock did have a little bit of that characteristic. So I, I hear where you're coming from. CPS, CPS. Yeah, you know, this is just kind of bottoming out. I don't see any reason to get excited about this. It says auto parts. Is that Cooper Supply? Let's take a look at. See, if you're going to trade auto parts, take a look at parts. Parts. Sound like a part. Look, look at that. Look at that trend. That trend is huge. You know, look for something like in a trend like that. Right now is not a transitional type of market. I mean, God forbid it could be if it begins to if it begins to roll over to the downside. PFSI, PFSI, John. Yeah, that looks pretty good. One reason you're not seeing this in the service tonight or in the Landry list is lately I've got enough stocks with much higher higher HVs to where I'm not as excited about these lower HV stocks. But you know, a year ago, if you'd have showed me this stock, I would I'd give you a high five. In fact, I'd give you a high five tonight. Why not? Okay, we can't high five anymore because of Corona. Oh, what a bummer. But yeah, that looks pretty good. That's sort of a textbook TKL. I'd almost like to see a tiny bit more knockout. That's I think that's close enough to be enter here and stop here and then measure that and make that projection up. You know what? I'm gonna give you a high five. High five on that one. 
volatility could be a little higher, but hey, you know what? It looks like it's ready to go. I agree. SLV, yeah, SLV, we talked about that one, Carol. That's silver. And go in and watch the show I did on stock charts tonight, the pitch. We talked about that one there. But yeah, it's absolutely, no, it's not a first thrust yet. Now, that's kind of the interesting aspect is some of these stocks, like I, I can't bring them up tonight out of courtesy for the people in the service, but if you if you're on the service, go and look at today's recommendations and somebody will remind me a week from now, or just go and look at the archives a week from now, once I make them public. There's one or two stocks that are on the list that today are now beginning to look more than a deep pullback. They're beginning to look like a first thrust down. In fact, you know what? I'll give you one. QDEL, for instance, okay? So a couple of days ago, this was a TKO, it was on the service. Now, I don't have it as a short tonight. I have it still as a long, but this looks like the beginnings of a short. I would not rush out and short this stock just yet. I'm not shorting anything yet, okay? But that's a more than a TKO by now, okay? Silver, no. Silver's still in a great uptrend. Go back to, let's just take a look at, uh, let's add in like a 30 moving average. Yeah, let's make this a 30 and make it exponential. Okay. So one pattern I've been showing lately is these Landry light pullbacks to the 30 day moving average. See, it took off here, pulls back to the 30, and then took it a little while, but took off again. That's one of my favorite patterns lately, especially with these stocks that have gone up tremendously. I like to see that nice deep retracement, at least based on this market conditions, these market conditions. But now we're kind of below the 30. It's beginning to look a little bit dubious in here. Let's take a look at the moving averages. They haven't crossed over just yet. But the point I'm trying to make here, Carol, is that we could be, with some of these deep pullbacks, they could turn into a bit of an inflection point where they can go either way. But yeah, three days ago, I was bullish on this one. Today, not so much. Stuart says love. All right, Stuart, I'm going to send a love back to you. I should turn my webcam back on and send you a big fat kiss. Oh, the stock love. Oh, okay. Um, It looks okay. It, it looks like it's lost a little bit of momentum. I'm going to say it's okay. I think it's pretty good, okay? So, yeah, nice uptrend followed by a pullback. The only problem I think I have with it is we kind of pull back almost to this breakout. If we pull back any further, then I would leave it alone, okay? So I, I, that looks okay. It kind of reminds me of Chewy. We're long Chewy. And it kind of reminds me of a box stocks. We're talking about these box stocks as of late, vis-a-vis -vis Darvis, Darvis. So you can see Chewy has been making boxes on top of boxes and had a decent day today. I am long Chewy. And it's not the most beautiful pattern in the world, but it is doing what it's supposed to do, okay? ASML, DOCU for deep pullbacks. ASML, it's going to be a semiconductor. No, this one this one looks more like a top to me. Let's see if we can get a bow tie in there. Not a complete crossing, but that looks more like a top because it's kind of rounded over, as you can see. And then always do your net net deal. You know, it really hasn't done a whole lot in, in a while. Okay, almost a month or so going back in time, maybe longer. Okay, yeah, a month and a half, six weeks. So that does not look good as a long. Yeah, Doc used another example. Okay, this is this was the original box doc that somebody was asking me about. And I said, hey, you know, this looks like one of those box stocks that, that, that goes up day after day. I did see a TKO here. I liked other stocks better at the time, okay? And, I'm, and this is all in an article I've been working on forever. But sometimes stocks just go up and they don't have any discernible pattern. But so far, it kind of looks like a box stock. And it looks like it's, but it looks like it's lost some steam in here, okay? So if you're long, I would maybe think twice if it got below let's say 175 in here. And no, that I wouldn't call that a deep pullback setup, okay? Look through the Landry list tonight and there's plenty of deep pullbacks in there, okay? Good point, Chris. OTRK, 
Yeah, there's a deep pullback, okay? And that's actually the Landry list. I forgot about that one. Kind of a crazy stock. I'm not going to go after it, but I thought it was worth showing tonight in the Landry list. But see, it made a gap higher, it shot higher, and then had a really, really nice deep correction. When the market takes off like that, really needs a deep correction. So on the flip side, AMTX needs more pullback. Yeah, and this one's pretty crazy. It does have, looks like it has enough volume to trade, but it's gone from one to three. So yeah, in a case like this, you want a, a extreme pullback. And I had a, I don't know if I took it off the service because it was so damn crazy, but let me see if I could find it for you. I think it was ZSAN. Yeah, that could actually use a little bit more pullback too, okay? I don't know, it's crazy. This is a ludicrous market we're in. Well, that's only 10%. Well, there's another one there. Would you consider LI to be a retrace or an IPO? No, see, you took out the low here, okay? So it's no longer it's no longer headed in the right direction. This is not a retrace. This is this is 100% retrace, okay? Somebody asked me earlier about where you put your stop. Well, if you got in this IPO, let's say on this breakout day for whatever reason, then your stop at the furthest should be below this low and you should have gotten stopped out of this particular stock by now, okay? You got stopped out today. Yeah, they don't always work, obviously. And, and you know, if they did, you never see my fat ass and I'm sure you wouldn't be here tonight either, <laughs> unfortunately. ZVO, I know that stock. Yeah, ZBO looks pretty good. I like the the nice little breakout in here, followed by the pullback. Good eye on that one. That sh should be in my Landry list. If not, there was one or two that were just kind of so crazy. I decided to take them out at the last minute. But yeah, that looks interesting. You know, strap in and be ready for a bumpy ride on that one. But yeah, that looks pretty good. I would use a very liberal entry and a fairly liberal stop on that too. Okay, we are out i'll get time for one or two more any more real quick while we're in the impasse i want to thank everybody for coming i really appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to be here okay invax yeah that looks pretty good now see there's a deep retracement okay now this could turn into a failure but so far that looks pretty good you've got a nice thrust higher i mean volatiles all get out right this is crazy and then a nice deep retracement kind of a tko if you want to call it that let's take a look at like a two-day chart it doesn't look as bad on a two-day, does it? Wow, it's kind of interesting. But yeah, so far, just kind of knockout moves. That looks pretty good. So Donald, you get credit on that one. BGFV, hey David, you're welcome. BGFV. Yeah, this one can actually use a little bit more pullback, but yeah, put that on your watch list. Tiny bit more pullback possibly on that one. And then look at the volatility, 170. I never dreamed I'd be talking about stocks in the 170s, you know? But that's what the market has given us. It's crazy. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up. I appreciate, again, everybody being here. Everybody have a fantastic night. If you're in the Facebook group, you better retain. Just ask questions there, and I'll be happy to oblige. Everybody else, you can shoot me an email, daviddavelander.com. I'll cover it first chance in one of these webinars. Everybody have a great night, and then if... If I don't talk to you between now and then, everybody have a fantastic weekend. Thank you so much. And you're welcome, Chris.